Well, hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Everything depends on <clears throat> what time you're watching this broadcast. Sort of like a point of view. It all depends on your point of view. Uh, as you can see, if you've been watching the broadcast, I've been in different locations so far. I think my office has the best um, between lighting and sound. <clears throat> Thankfully, my voice is starting to come back. I've struggled with that for months. But uh, I realized from watching some of the uh, videos I did in this same room over in my on my perch over there where I study and write and do some other things, the lighting was so exceptionally poor that when I reviewed the, the tape, uh, I was getting depressed <laughs> just looking at it. Oh boy. You know, <clears throat> behind me, you can see part of three sayings that my wife put up on the wall. This is our family room. And um, it says, laugh often. Um, you know, one thing that's very important when you are dealing with the subject of anxiety and or depression which obviously is very difficult to do, but you have to maintain a sense of humor. Sense of humor uh, means, I mean, pretty much basically means that you're either mocking something that's real or you're not taking it so seriously, which is, it's a good thing sometimes. Obviously, there's things in life you got to take seriously. But um, having a good sense of humor is is something to, if you don't have it, develop it. I, uh, I have a habit. Um, I, I try to select music to listen to, not so much to match my mood, but to make a counterpoint. For instance, if I'm feeling down, I want to listen to, I may watch Buddy Rich playing some of his drum solos or just some of his, you know, um, <clears throat> some of his famous pieces throughout the year. If I'm feeling, um, you know, a little too exuberant, you know, where I can't concentrate because my mind's busy, then I'll uh, turn on uh, Bach or Mozart. So you, so you make it fit your situation. But a sense of humor overall is a great asset to, to have in life. So, um, and before I forget, I wanted to give George Bruno uh, a great shout out. Um, well, let me just tell you real quickly how I connected with George Bruno some years ago. I was looking for beard tutorials, and especially guys who knew what they were talking about that had a white beard, like mine. Mine is white everywhere except in the mustache. And George would often have an expression saying, um, I made all the mistakes, so you don't have to. So I just want to let George know that I made all the mistakes that you made. <laughs> Primarily because I'm too stubborn to, I gotta always figure out that I can do this, and uh, for the most part I can. And also, I didn't really quite take my beard too seriously. But George, I want to let you know that um, I'm learning. So I went back to his channel to get some more tutorials and review the old ones, and then I ran into his Daybreak show. So I've been watching that, um, and yesterday. His comment was, or his statement was, uh, you know, what has this um, sequestering, well, we all have code words. I noticed that he's doing the same thing that I'm doing, so I'm using different code words trying to teach you. This is my code word, which now if there's a YouTube snitch watching, they're going to pick up on it. I'm going to switch it again. I'll just change it again until we have our own um, crypt, cryptic language, cryptology going. So you, when I say situation, you know, I'm talking about the co-wash that uh, is now a virus. Okay. So anyway, so George made a comment about, hey, what, what's happened to you during this, um, uh, our situation? And uh, have you gotten soft? Now, I've been working out all my life, which is something I want to talk to you about today. I've been working out for all of my life. I started when I was 10. If I tell you how many years, it gives away the whole birth thing, you know, so I'm not doing that. But I've been working all of my life. And I'm going to relate this, by the way, to anxiety, depression, and 
so forth. Nervousness. That's our subject on this channel. And um, anyway, he made. He said, you know, let me know. Have you gotten soft during this this period? And um, I just wanted. To, I really commented to also encourage George, as we've connected in the past a couple of times, um, by mail and by phone, and uh, then to, to help out others who were reading the comments. Obviously, some of you did. Uh, by the way, I want to thank some of you who subscribed because you saw the comment and saw the connection between George Bruno and myself which I think in the future may become stronger because we have so much in common. It's, he doesn't realize how much we have in common because I'm watching him much more than he's watching me, which, by the way, is a treat because I've always been, um, <clears throat> everywhere I go, I'm usually in charge. Radio, 33 years. Television, well, since the 90s. And um, I'm always doing the talking. I like to listen to somebody. Anyway, he, um, he asked about getting soft. Well, it just so happens that um, I've hit the 99 to 100 percentile for strength for men my age in almost every lift that you can mention. If I had pictures, I could show you. But the strength training was just constantly putting weight on me and was raising my blood sugar. I've also had open heart surgery in 2008 without any symptoms. I didn't have any symptoms, just the test showed you have a... Bad blockages. That's a genetic thing in my family, right? It's a hundred percent on the Barnett side. And there's some on my mother's side too. So I guess I was destined. I don't know. Because I took care of myself. Anyway, um, so you know, we hit this situation, you know, where we're voluntarily quarantining. And um I said, Okay, I'm gonna have to make this situation work before I, I lose my mind. And I have to be tuning into somebody else's channel to figure out how to get it back. So uh, for years, you know, when I was young, I would do 100 push-ups right in a row. Flip over, do 100 crunches, or back then we called them sit-ups. Then I lived on the the, um, the border, the, the um, what do you call it, the city line between Yonkers, my front door, and the Bronx was my back door. And it was right on Van Cortlandt Park. So I would go out and run for miles and miles and miles. And I had a couple little things, you know, a pull-up bar. So I just went back to doing what I was doing as a kid. And the push-ups were getting better and better and better. Meantime, I decided through thinking things through that the reason I don't lose weight, because people assumed I, I, I ate a lot and I, and I don't. I really don't. Um, and so I said, you know, the reason I don't lose weight is I've got to be insulin resistant. This is what I came up with. And got myself an app and I said I wasn't counting calories as much as I was counting blood sugar how many grams per day make sure I stay under or hit the line stay in the neighborhood cholesterol all that stuff and by doing that of course the calories would come down too I was selective on foods I gave up processed foods I gave up anything in the bag a can a bottle I won't touch it because it's too hard to keep track of everything that's in there and um what I wanted to say is that, you know, when I put down in the comment yesterday on, on George's channel is the fact that I didn't get soft. I got, well, I wouldn't say stronger because I haven't been in the gym in a few months, but strong, still strong, reverted to crunches, and I lost uh, 40 pounds. Of course, strength goes with it. When I get back to the gym, some of that's going to come back on again. I'm not giving up strength training. For anybody uh, I really enjoy it and it made me it makes me feel good but um, I brought my blood sugar down because I was I was I, I was intent and I'm still intent on uh, reversing my heart disease and reversing diabetes which also runs in my family I had a cousin that died in his 40s my grandfather died at 28 uh, from uh, 38 from um, major heart attack all of his sons my dad and seven brothers all had open heart surgery so it runs in the family and i figured i don't want to get old with gobs of pills take enough medication now um you know what in eight weeks i lowered my bl blood sugar my hb1ac was just hitting seven and was getting up climbing climbing eight weeks it dropped down 
to well, 6.4, which is still pretty good, but my blood sugar dropped down 30 points. I was just common sense. Well, maybe a little bit more than common sense. I have a background in anatomy and physiology, as well as some other things, as uh, I put down in the comments. And I don't talk about that too much, but I want to encourage people that you don't have to, you don't have to be, you know, at home. So many people, as I've told you during this, um, the, this uh, thing of ours, uh, are experiencing depression experiencing anxiety people are getting tense frustrated irritated i looked at it as a time to reset go through my goals set some new life goals i'm i can't say i'm having a good time of it but it's being very productive so anyway george i want to put a hashtag down there just for you okay um and i want to just uh thank you for all the tutorials this uh absolutely gorgeous beard that i have I owe it to God. <laughs> All right. I'll put a hashtag just so you're alerted that I made mention of you on my broadcast here today. All right. Let's get on track with our subject, anxiety and depression. Again, above me, you see the, the little, um, what you call it? It's a little word of encouragement. Actually, it says, sit long, relax, laugh, laugh often. We don't sometimes laugh enough. I have some other ideas that come up during these few months too that I may be calling a few people on see if they're interested in doing it with me. You have to find something to laugh about. You have to have a sense of humor. And when it comes to the symptoms of anxiety and depression, when you're going through it, it's anything but funny. Now you know that. Certainly I know it. In the periods that I've had in my life, and they've been, they've been frequent, but two of them were real dramatic. Um, you have to learn how in between to, when you when you're improving to develop a sense of humor i try to find humor in things everybody who knows me personally knows that i can be very sarcastic in an endearing way not an insulting way i try not to be insulting but you know i'll pick on people and make fun of them and then i start i start laughing and then they start laughing and then they come back at me and they make some remark and it's good fun but it lightens up the moment it just it just keeps you keeps you lighthearted. I was talking about toxic people. Some people, you know, because I've pastored them. I've been I've been in pastorate for 43 years. You learn a few things, uh, quite a few things. There's some people that no matter what you do, no matter what you do, they're just not going to be happy. And so I got always, as a teacher and a preacher, got to find a, a balance between, hey, we got to take this serious and having lighter moments. Well, most of those I find in my personal relationships where I can talk one-on-one -on -one with people and, uh, like I said, just joke around and tease. And I just, that's, I've always been that way and I enjoy it. Most of my friends enjoy it. The ones that don't enjoy it are no longer my friends. <laughs> All right. So this is what I want to mention to you. Developing a sense of humor. Though right now may, may be very, very difficult for you between our situation and also uh, your propensity to, to uh, towards anxiety depression and and so on okay well I, I get it believe me uh, there's one word that people always use to describe me when they just leave some of the like that guy's really intense and I am I am just as I've gotten older I've learned how to turn it on turn it off but I, I am a very focused individual if I set my mind to something, I don't need coaches. I don't need um, people motivating me. I don't need a phone call. I never used a training partner until recently. Uh, a friend of mine, um, a Marine Corps vet veteran, um, and I, we hooked up and we, we get along very well. He's really making good progress, strong. Uh, but beyond that, you know, if God forbid he wasn't around for some reason, I'd just go back to doing my thing. I don't need that. But but I'm I'm a bit different, okay? So don't go by me. Sense of humor. I want to talk to you about exercise. Do you exercise? Well, you know, well, you should. You need to not only burn off a lot of the adrenaline that's flowing and other um, stress hormones, cortisol, so forth, 
um, but you also need to release those endorphins. Do a little study on endorphins and find out that it's not just exercise, but there's many ways to release the natural chemicals in your body that make you creative, that make you feel good. And the word endorphin, especially the last part, the fiend, endorphin, endorphin, is related to the word morphine. In other words, these endorphins, they, um, they actually will lessen the pain in your body. If you have arthritis, if you have, uh, you know, I get chronic neck pain just because I'm always sitting all the time and typing and on the phone and what have you. So my neck gets stiff quite a lot. But you get exercise and you get moving. Now, you don't have to be like me. I'm, I'm an hour and a half in the gym minimum. Part of that's my talking as well. But um, it's about two hours a day. Now, here at home, I'm not putting so much time into it. But, um, and I may lessen it when we get back to um, the gym again. But it's, um, it's, a, um, it's a great release for the physical body. For me, it helps me to study better. My mind is, more, is clearer. So exercise is something you should do. As simple as just taking a daily walk. And it don't have to be a power walk either. Me, I never liked power walking. I still don't like it. Uh, it was very uncomfortable. I wanted to either run or leisurely walk, but in between didn't work for me. But it may work for you. And go out, take a mile, a half mile, three or four miles if you can, and make it you know something to look forward to. Develop a sense of humor. I can't, you know, I mean, I could tell you some things, but some things for me just come natural. I find humor in certain things. I don't know why. Irish wit. Um, exercise also genetically I'm just made for strength as they say uh, the old saying goes I was made for comfort not speed and even though as a fighter I had incredibly good hand speed and I still do um, but in my legs and all that you know, well there was mo modest amount of speed and I could run but you know I wasn't 10 second 100 meters or 100 yards back then um, but I had other every, strength just came natural for me it came easy for me and I, I enjoy it I just enjoy working out anything and I think that you will too and even though this is not necessarily the biblical part of our studies it's one of those practical things that I taught my students in Renewed uh, to do go take a walk I have a stationary bike here at the house boy am I glad I bought it I also wish I had the weights that I used to have here in the house, and now I'm trying to get them, and no, can't get them anywhere. All right, so you got to make it work. Remember what I put on my comment? Improvise. Adapt. Overcome. You don't like your situation, both internally with the anxiety and the depression. We don't like what's going on in our country. We've got to start to improvise. And then we adapt to that new plan, and then we overcome. In our situations so exercise is one I wanted to leave with you today um, humor developing a sense of humor oh, I forgot to tell you what I do one of the things I do is I put on I like old movies I don't watch many modern movies at all I don't care who makes them or from what country I just don't watch them they have no relation to me except the occasional one that doesn't have gratuitous vulgarity and obviously gratuitous sex. I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. I try to live what I preach, and I don't. I'm not interested in that. Plus, I came out of that background. I don't. I don't want to be reminded of it or to build up a habit again. So I don't. I just don't watch them. So I watch classic movies or I watch ones where I already know what the content is. I like putting on the Honeymooners. I like putting on the Marx Brothers. I like putting on Lauren Hardy's my absolute all-time favorite. You know, just the slapstick, the falling down chimneys, the falling down stairs. The fact that both of them think they're smart, but they're really, you know, they act stupid. It's great stuff. I used to watch it. My granddaughter and my grandson as well. Um, we have quite a few. This is the two oldest. Uh, they used to love it. I was like, come on, we'll have a Laurel and Hardy party. And she used to love it. Now she's a little older now. I don't know that she would want to sit with Pop and, and do that. But um, they loved it. And that's 70 years ago. Actually, more than 70 years ago. 80 years ago. 
but this, it's still relevant to life because we can all relate to somebody smashing themselves with a door and falling down the steps, and it's, it's just funny. Something, by the way, as a commentary here, I think we need to get back to in America. Enough of the gratuitous vulgar, vulgarity, enough of the gratuitous nudity, enough of the... See, I watched uh, the, something I hadn't seen. I like Marvel Comics. I grew up on it, and I watched the uh, remake of Superman and... Who was in it? Wonder Woman or somebody else? And boy, yeah, they had to slip in vulgarity. I mean, this is for kids. Okay, well, that's the kind of world we're living in, so we better develop a sense of humor. Exercise will help you. And the, the one last thing that I, and I'm gonna have to make short videos every so often because I'm forgetting things. There's so much knowledge up here. Doing it in 20 minutes or so is, is, is difficult. For stability. You got your Bible, use one Bible, and the words will always be in the exact same place, indicating God himself never changes. Now what I do, in addition to my Bible, is I look up. See, I'm sitting here by my window, which is shut by the way. I don't know if you could hear the street noises, but I know if I kept it open, we'd be dead in the water. And I look up, and not so much the daytime because clouds are moving and so forth, but at night. The stars, they don't change. They're in the exact same place they have been since God created the world. That tree over there, unless it was to come down or we cut it down, well, it's in the exact same place. In other words, for me, what I do is I look at nature and I see, with relatively speaking, especially the cosmos, the universe, it's immovable. And so is God. God never changes. He's always the same. And God is good. And he will be good to you. He desires to heal you of your diseases. He desires to free you from fear and depression and mental health disorders. All right. That's enough for today. Here's something I just want to leave with you. Um, I'm thinking about doing a broadcast once a week where I, I don't know what I would the title of it just yet, but I want to share with people my life experiences. They've been varied and they've been many. And I've learned from very, very hard times as well as um, good times. And then weave it into a story to help you. Look, at older men, older women can do a lot for you that are younger. All right. This is how and I'm in the gym and I'm giving somebody advice and they blow me off. Uh, you know, I said 30 years, he's going to come back and realize why I told him. Don't jerk that weight that way or don't do this. But I said, why do you think I got this white beard? I've lived long enough now to learn quite a few things. And as you know, if you've seen my comment or you've seen that uh, in my handle, I just have a little bit of my the letters behind my name. But I've, I've learned a lot. I've studied a lot. I've read a lot. Anyway. Think about doing this broadcast. I wonder what you're thinking, uh, what your thoughts are. If you leave me a comment, if you'd be interested, I, I would make an attempt to do it. It will be a once a week broadcast. I'll take my life experience, share with you what happened and what I learned out of it, and relate it to you. So it'll be about a 30 minute broadcast. If you're interested, or you think it's a good idea, let me know because I'm, I'm really not looking for more things to do. I'm, I'm really not. I'm the kind of guy, just like my friend George, you could push. Leave me in the woods and just give me my Bible, some books, and some food to eat, and I'm good. I don't need much. Very simple. All right, let me pray for you. Father, I just ask you today to help all those that are watching. We have more subscribers. Touch them as well. If you're going to grow this channel, grow it for your glory and for your honor. And I just ask you, God, to touch those that have watched today in Jesus' name. Thank you for subscribing. For those of you who haven't and you're interested in what I'm doing here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to grow. I don't mean the subscribership. I mean the, the topic is going to grow. There's a, lot, there's a lot in here I can't give you in 20 minutes. Well, today is a little, a little longer than 20 minutes. So subscribe. Hit the notification button. And this way you'll know when a video is up, especially if I start doing shorter ones because there's something here. I almost did it yesterday that I forgot to tell you. And it's probably going to get down to that because there's so much. Okay, glad you were with me today. I thank you for that. I hope that these things are helping. If they are, leave me a comment. Remember, that's the only feedback I get. Preaching is a lot like bowling with a curtain before the pins. So you, 
come down the lane and let go of the ball and hear smash but you don't know if it was a strike or three you just don't know so your comments help me and encourage me to uh, continue doing what I'm doing in helping you okay thanks for being with me God bless see you probably Sunday uh, in the service we will continue our study on the um, study of the end times end times prophecy God bless thanks for being with me see you tomorrow